My guest today is Dr. Eli David. He's the chief technology officer at Deep Instinct, a company that claims to be the first to apply the concept of deep learning to cybersecurity. Dr. David is one of the leading researchers in the field of computational intelligence. We wanted to learn more about deep learning and how it applies to cybersecurity. It is the closest we have got in computer science to creating something that uh, mimics our brains or more accurately takes direct inspiration from our brain. Uh, deep learning has obtained amazing results in all the fields it has been applied to. In computer vision, we have seen 20 to 30 percentage point improvements in all the benchmarks, similar improvements in speech recognition, a big improvement in text understanding. And in all these fields, deep learning is completely agnostic to the domain, processing just raw data without any feature engineering or pre-processing. Cybersecurity is a very tough problem since it is very easy to create new malware and it's very difficult to detect them. So the underlying uh, idea of us was that if deep learning has been so successful in the other fields, uh, especially when tackling challenging problems, then it should be successful here too. So help me understand, uh, you know, when does artificial intelligence cross over and become deep learning? Actually, deep learning is a subfield of uh, machine learning, which is in itself a subfield of uh, artificial intelligence. Since the early 2000s, machine learning has been the most successful field within AI. The idea in machine learning is instead of we humans try to find smart heuristics and code it, we just gather data and give it to the machine so that the machine will learn by itself by observing many examples. This is traditional machine learning. But the problem with traditional machine learning is that in every problem that you apply it, you first need to perform feature extraction, feature engineering. For example, if the problem is uh, face recognition, you need to bring image processing experts to analyze the problem domain and tell you that the most important features are distance between pupils, distance between nose and the mouth, proportions of the face, etc. And this is how in traditional machine learning the raw data, in our example the raw image, is converted into a list of a few tens or at most a few hundred values. When you look at someone, and you recognize their face, you're not calculating the distance between their pupils and multiplying it by proportions of their face, hopefully. You're just receiving the raw data, the raw pixels, and your visual cortex by having learned how faces look like immediately provides a prediction. The deep learning is the first family of methods within machine learning that completely skips that feature extraction phase. So in deep learning, we have many layers of artificial neurons. In our brain, we have real neurons. In deep learning or deep neural networks, artificial neurons. They're connected to each other via synapses. And we have hundreds of millions of synapses in tens of layers of neural networks in typical artificial neural net. So back to our analogy, if you're applying deep learning to uh, face recognition, the input would be just raw pixels, no pre-processing whatsoever. In text understanding, it would typically be the raw characters, not even words, characters. And in our case, in cybersecurity, we train our brain, uh, the deep instinct brain, by training it on data sets of uh, many hundreds of millions of samples of malicious and legitimate files, and the input is just the raw bytes. So in Deep Instinct, we'll look at a computer file exactly as if it is an image, uh, but with bytes instead of pixels. So we're completely agnostic to the file format. We do, do static uh, prediction. We even don't care about uh, the operating system. So this is how deep learning is much more versatile than traditional machine learning, which is in itself the most successful field within AI. So is there, uh, is there a penalty to pay in terms of uh, computational overhead? Deep learning is uh, very cumbersome to train. Um, you do require special purpose hardware. The reason is that deep learning is a family of several tens of algorithms complex to understand, difficult to implement, but the most challenging part is that even if you do have a full implementation, you still have to re-implement everything on GPUs, graphical processing units, which are, in our case, up to 100 times faster than CPUs, 
for the training purposes. So deep learning is very cumbersome and slow for training, very fast in prediction mode. It takes a few milliseconds on the slowest CPU or mobile device that you can imagine for the prediction to work. This sounds a bit counterintuitive, but in fact it's very similar to how our brain works. Uh, it takes us many years to learn a new language, but w when we learn it, it takes a few milliseconds to remember how a certain word is called. And I would say that within our lifetimes, um, some say 10 years, some say uh, 30, 40 years, uh, we will most probably see near human level artificial uh, cognition. Because what we see is that the more neurons we're capable uh, of adding to our deep learning module, the better results we obtain. Similar to the evolution of Homo sapiens, more brain, more neurons, better cognition. So we do think that the, we are approaching the level that in the next uh, few tens of years, computers will be virtually indistinguishable from humans uh, as far as their cognitive capabilities are concerned. That's Dr. Eli David. He's the Chief Technology Officer at Deep Instinct. And that's the CyberWire. Thanks to all of our sponsors who make the CyberWire possible. The CyberWire podcast is produced by Pratt Street Media. Our editor is John Petrick. Our social media editor is Jennifer Iben. And our technical editor is Chris Russell. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie. I'm Dave Bittner. Have a great weekend, everybody. Mm -hmm.